So Amanda has to do all of that all over again. <laughs> She's saying no. So um, I'm going to switch the view to um, speak of you, I think, on my side, just so that we're seeing on the on our TV in here to make sure that we, oops, that's not what I wanted. Karen is here. Um, sorry, please bear with me. And that might be the best way we can do it because it usually comes up as the last person that spoke. So that's why. Yeah. Um, Rhonda said she can barely hear my speaking. Can anybody else? Um, are you having issues hearing us? Hopefully, I don't see anybody. Everybody's being um, incognito today. I can hear you. Okay, that was Marsha. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, the audio is great for Denise. So I'll, I think I was talking kind of low, but um, I'm going to switch it over now to Marilyn to view her. The right one. Oh, we have her upside down. <laughs> Amanda, do you want? Is that okay? It looks a little sideways. Like that, maybe down the other way. Yeah, that should work. Huh? No, the other way. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Hello, my friends. I'm Marilyn Young. Um, my Wyandotte name is Yonote Zigwiki, and I'm very proud of that name, and I'm proud to be here. And after that introduction, I'm kind of overwhelmed, and, and it's like, oh my gosh, now I'm uh, uh, on the gun to get this right. So today we're going to talk about ribbon skirts and how to make them, and there are several different ways to make them. In writing the instructions, I'm very much a traditional, technical uh, seamstress. I like to follow patterns in the beginning, and then over time I create my own way of doing things. I do that with quilting. And in quilting, we have to be very precise with measurements. So, hence why the instructions are very detailed and laser here and cut here and so forth. And in doing these instructions and talking to him and talking to Amanda, they both uh, create differently than I do. So, we've kind of incorporated um, some of their thoughts on this. Uh, so, I'm going to have to probably look at my notes. To make sure that I kind of tell you different ways because everybody creates differently, and um, you just have to find out your your best ways to do that. Um, as Amanda said, you want to make this skirt your own. You don't want to copy somebody. You want to show uh, what uh, your native heritage means to you. And I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll step back. Maybe, I don't know. But this skirt, I, I kind of wanted to go here. So this skirt I created, well, I created my granddaughter's two skirts for Orange Shirt Day. And being that they're four and six, I wanted something a little lively for them, and I found this really, really cute material. If I can get it up here and not show, but it has flowers on it, and it has little birds, and it has teal, which is one of my granddaughter's uh, favorite colors, and it has orange in it, which went along with Orange Shirt Day, and it has pink and just lots of little girl colors, and then it has the teal, pink, uh, orange, and yellow. And this material spoke to me as material that my granddaughters would really love. The other thing was birds. Children are 
they need to learn to spread their wings and they learn and over time they spread their wings and they fly. Well, also thinking of Orange Shirt Day, the children that are being found, they're now being able to spread their wings and fly home. They're free. They're free. And the same way I did the ribbons, the flowy ribbons uh, at the side, which to me represents how children run and play and they're free, uh, like, uh, you know, birds floating in the air, uh, you know, the grass as they run through the grass, it flows along. So that material spoke to me. So we hope when we choose rib ribbon and material that it, it speaks to you, but anything uh, is, is appropriate uh, pretty much. Uh, so <clears throat> let's get started. Does anybody have any questions at this time? You can put anything in the chat if you want. I'm glad, Rhonda, that you are able to hear now. Good job. And can you hear me fine from this, this angle? All right. Well, we're going to go on. We're, I'm going to go over the supplies. And in the list, uh, you should have gotten from Kim a list of instructions on how to make your ribbon skirt. Uh, some tips that I hope you will read uh. to think about uh, before you start making a ribbon skirt. There's measuring how to measure um, yourself and also just an idea on how much fabric you're going to need. On the average, uh, most people will need two yards of material. The fuller you want it, the more material you want. Uh, items that you need is a good pair of, I'll get this right, here we go. Okay, a good pair of fabric scissors, scissors. Uh, I do suggest purchasing a pair of nice scissors that you only use for fabric. Do not let anybody cut garden with your life and thread with your life. Um, you need a measuring tape. Uh, we're adjusting the camera here. Measuring tape. Um, another cutting tool is the rotary cutter. But if you get a rotary cutter, you want to get a mat. Um, these can be rather costly, but just you know, watch for them to go on sale. But you definitely want a uh, cutting mat if you're using a rotary. If you want some kind of a marking tool, um, I recently really like the chalk. Um, it, you'll find it in white, you'll find it in blue, uh, you can find it in pink, different colors. I like the chalk because it's easy to uh, take like a sponge and go over it and it comes off. It's also washable. Uh, this is another great marking tool. It's uh, soapstone and it's also great to have. It doesn't uh, rub out, but it will warp. If you wash, it will uh, go away. Um, you want um, maybe a sewing guide, a uh, seam guide, a uh, ruler. I am a ruler queen, so because of my quilting, um, if you need to go out and purchase a ruler, um, a clear ruler is great. Um, a three inch, uh, a three by 13, 14 is great. Uh, one of my favorite rulers, yeah. And those rulers are used with the rotary cutters. Yes, yes. But they're also great for measuring when you're making long uh, pieces of material like you do. Uh, this is a kind of a favorite uh, ruler here. It's cold, so if you're traveling, you can take it with you. But it is a, a six by twenty-four, which is a great ruler to have. Um, I even have one that's wider too. Uh, but they can be very costly. But just look on Amazon, look on Joann's, and uh, Joann's have uh, coupons. Hobby Lobby has them. Lots for them to go on sale. Um, 
you need glue. This is just normal over tool glue. Um, some safety pins. Uh, a seam ripper. People don't want the seam the rip, but sometimes you can cast it. Um, it's just provide a cast loose from the sewing. You're going to have to use the seam ripper. Um, great pins. Um, I happen to purchase some very, very thin uh, pins that are great for using uh, on ribbon uh, rather than just standard dress making. Uh, pins. Um, I have two feet that I suggest. This is called a walking foot. And it's great uh, because it helps move uh, the material underneath. It also, if you look here to the side, it's great for moving your needle right over next to the side. I don't know if you can, how well you can see this. And lining that up with the edge of the ribbon, and then that helps you guide it. Um, as we grab it over here. The other one that a lot of machines will have is what they call an open toe foot. It's clear and for that reason you can see and it's a little bit more open here. Um, it also has on the back kind of an indentation so it lets you uh, zigzag material uh, when you're zigzagging for it to go along with. Uh, fabric and not get them stuck. So those are the basic uh, supplies that you need. Uh, by all means, you don't need to go and buy a rotary cutter. You don't have to buy the special, um, the special rulers. You can use a school ruler, a wood ruler, a plastic ruler. Um, so, uh, but those are kind of the basics. Uh, and then, of course, you need your materials um, and you need your ribbon and elastic. Um, so those are the items you need. Uh, one thing, if you've never sewn or you're new to sewing on ribbon, you may want to practice. This is just a, a scrap piece of fabric that I've drawn some lines on. And if you just take that and sew along those lines, that will help you get used to following the line. You can also take material and, you know, fold it and put it along that line. And then sew just to the inside of this. Maybe I can't, there. Just go to the inside of that and practice sewing, um, especially if you've never sewn on a machine before. And don't be scared of the machine, just get in there, take scrap uh, fabric, and just sew, just sew until you feel comfortable with it. Um, Kim was a good example during our, our uh, pre uh, uh, class. Uh, for a couple of years, I won't learn how to sew. She was scared of the machine. And if you've watched Facebook, you've seen she's now posted uh, several skirts. She did the jean jacket she's working on today. And so she was not too scared of the machine. So I'm very proud of what Kim has done, as well as the, uh, the other students that were in that class. So I think we're over. Okay. Yes, on the ribbon. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, on when choosing your ribbon, uh, <laughs> be sure to get the polyester or you. There is silk ribbon actually out there. It's it's rather expensive, so you may not want to ever start with that. Uh, but you don't want to get the acetate ribbon. Uh, that is more for floral and it will not hold up in, in the wash and it easily rips and tears. 
So you definitely want to get uh, the polyester. It's available at Joanne's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, um, Amazon. Um, and so just you'll find yourself going to the fabric store and walking by and oh, we don't have that color of ribbon and you buy it and next thing you know, you're hoarding ribbon <laughs> and fabric and beads and you need a big plan. Um, so those are the slides. Any questions on the supplies? You can unmute or you can type in the chat if you have any questions and you can do that at any time. You can just jump in. And you know what? If you don't have a sewing machine, you could actually hand sew this. It would not be that difficult to hand sew because there are people that know how to sew um, a straight seam or just with a needle and thread. So you could do a ribbon skirt by hand. Take you a little bit longer. But you can do it. Um, so um, we have this nice little doll here um, that Becca, let me see. I'll learn this little, <laughs> little thing. Okay, and it has this cute little ribbon skirt on it. And if you look real close, I don't know whether you can see it or not. But they have actually done a zigzag stitch. They've actually used different size ribbons. But also at the end, they did not hem this. They just used the salvage on it. So I wanted to show you, you could do this on your skirt as well. It's just used the salvage. Um, on the inside, um, they've used a serger, but they've done this the seams so that they don't ravel out, um, especially on cotton, that's always nice to do. Um, but you could do it on each, um, each side or you can put them together and just run down the edge of, of it. But I thought this was real cute to show um, that you can use just the salvage, just the hem and uh, to use the zigzag. I realized the more I've watched that a lot of people use the zigzag. Um, so I personally do straight stitch, but um, I think zigzag is, is more popular than just sewing along the edge. So I guess, uh, are you ready to start putting a skirt together? <laughs> Amanda is always the excited one. Excited. She gets people going and let me move some of this stuff off so that we have room here. Get going and Amanda. We have one person ready. Well, I may need your help of moving the camera. Yes. So the first thing you want to do when you get your material is your uh, right, it. It and right and press it. Now, unfortunately, traveling because I live in Kansas City, this was at one time all nice and pressed, and it's no longer. So you have your salvage shed, and you have your raw edge. So the salvage edge is just the manufacturer's finished edge. It yes. is. It is this part here that is along both sides, the the width, the the blade. width, the width, no, the width of the the width of the material. Because when you purchase the material, the place you buy it, they're gonna lay it out. It's gonna be folded, and you're gonna have the salvage end and raw the raw end, and they're gonna go. Okay, you want two yards. And then they're going to cut it. So you have two raw ends, and then running the length is the two salvage sides. So what you want to do is take and fold your material in half with the raw ends together. And 
And you're just going to take and put two of the ends together, kind of take it out like this. And then you are going to fold it again with salvage it to salvage it, as long as it doesn't fall off the table. And you're going to match the folded side together, the ends, and just straighten this out and put all your salvages together. And straighten out all the little wrinkles in your fabric. And then when you look at the raw sides, you're going to find that they're not even. So this is where you're going to square up the material. And you could actually, especially if you don't have a long ruler, go ahead and fold this in half again. That's not in the instructions. I thought of this later of people that do not have long rulers. All right. And then you are going to take a ruler, and I'm going to take a bigger one. It won't open for me. I should have got a color. They should have color. And you're going to line up just any line along the edge of the fabric, the folded edge. And look on your material to find where it goes in the most because you want to cut all of these where they're all the same. So I'm just going to take it right there. Make sure that this is runs uh, parallel to the edge of the material. If you're using scissors, I would just mark it with a marking pen. If you're using a rotary, just cut up. I didn't change my blade before I left, so I wanted to cut. And you've now squared up the material, the fabric. Okay, the next step, thank you. The next step you want to do is you're going to cut the width of the material you need. So, what you need to do is take a measuring tape, and I've got the measuring worksheet here. You're going to measure your waist. You're going to measure your hips, and then you're going to measure your stride. Amanda, may I have your help here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'll, I'll do this. so what you want to do is you want to stand, and you want to stretch out as far as you can. One lady said, "Stretch out like you're you're running, uh, trying to chase the guy." And you want to kind of measure around your, your ankles, maybe a little bit lower or wherever the length of your skirt you want to hit. Lower? No, but you can't. If you want it to go around your ankles, go around your ankles uh, down below. And measure that width. So write down those measurements on the um, worksheet, you're going to take your waist and your hips and multiply it at least by one and a half. And of those three measurements, whichever is the largest measurement, that is going to be the width around of your skirt. All right. So I'm going to take, for example, that say a 40 inch your hips are 40 times one and a half, that would be 60 inches, but maybe your stride is 66. So you're going to use the 66 inch um, length. Then because your material is folded in half, you only need to measure out 30 inches. So you would measure out 30 inches, mark that, 
and then you would cut that off, off of the raw inside. And then you would have the width of your fabric. Now, there is another way to do this that is less um, a lot of measuring. Uh, what you do is you buy two to three yards of material. And with Amanda's help him, I bought this beautiful material yesterday. There's a great little quilt shop close by that I didn't know about. So you take the material, the width size, and kind of get your ends here sure. and kind of like almost like you're kind of getting ready to put a shot on. Take it around your waist and hold it out and do that that stride um, step again. And you hold this out and you bring that around. You might have to have a friend. And where this comes down, when you hold it out to the front of your feet, mark that. Just with your little fingers there and then mark that. And then you're gonna go in and you're gonna cut this extra off. And that's an easy way to just measure yourself. Does that make uh, sense to everybody? Does that, does that make sense? There is uh, some YouTube uh, things of measuring skirts um, and you'll see women do that. I'm again, yes. more technical. Mm -hmm. So that's another way of doing it. Um, at the same time, let's, let's keep this here. At the same time, you don't have to be technical about measuring the length. So if you're gonna put a hem in it, kind of maybe go ahead and fold up an inch if you're gonna put a hem and then hold it up to yourself and have the bottom hit where you want and then measure just by taking it and okay there's my waist well then you know you have this much extra and mark that so you kind of know where your seam is and then you can just measure from there and we'll show you how to do that so you don't have to be super technical on that it, if the fashion police are not going to be here and say, <laughs> well, you didn't make that 25 and a half, five and eight inches. We're not going to do that. So after you have the material, and I'm going to use a smaller piece to make it easier. So you have this, this one's actually going to be for my granddaughter. So you have basically a rectangle type skirt. Um, so what I do is then I lay it out flat and I measure how my length and then I add at least an inch for the hem. And if I'm using inch elastic, I add one and a half inches for the elastic. And then I, I take that to the length that I want and I measure the uh, along the width from salvage to salvage and then I cut off where the extra but you don't have to do it at that time you can just mark it <laughs> <laughs> so um, here I'm going to for the hem I want, want an inch hem, but I also like to turn up a half an inch. I The quarter inch is traditional sewing, it, but I like to use a half because it's just easier to, to fold up. So I am going to mark a hem using the chalk. Over here. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to mark it there so there's my hem i will even come in here and mark the half an inch just line up your 
your ruler along the bottom, mark it. The same way at the waist, the waist, you know, if you had that extra, you knew, you saw that you were gonna have to cut off five inches, you're gonna go along, you're gonna measure five inches and mark it. Um, and I should have used that bigger one. Then you want to mark for the elastic waist. So I'm using an inch um, elastic. So I'm going to mark an inch and a half along the top. And I'm gonna fold under a half an inch. So I'm gonna mark again a half an inch. So I have those marks. Um, at this point, you can go and I will, I will, I forgot to say, I mark on the front side of the material because then when you go to press, you can just press right along that line and then press up on the second line. And right there, I have my hem. And I will do the same on the other side for the casing, at the elastic at the top. Or you can just leave it and do your pressing later. Um, then you're going to take your ribbon and just figure out where do you want to place. Now, the one thing you want to do is you, this is another reason to put your hem up and I'm going to use my other one. <laughs> okay, so I have pressed up my hem and I've done the casing. I want to make sure that the ribbon starts above the hem because if you go to sew your hem at the end, you don't want to be sewing through your ribbon. So you just take your ribbons. And you can start laying them out, playing with them. How do you want them placed? You know, do you want them together? Do you want them apart? You know, what what order? Just play around till you come to an order that you like. For this skirt, I actually chose. Um, Five colors of ribbons that will be side by side. And an envelope. Yeah, an envelope. That will be the order of the ribbons. Now, when they go side by side, you only have to mark one line. But if you were going to do them, um, Separately, I would mark the bottom of where you want and mark all the major it and mark it all the way across based upon your hem. And then let's say you want the next one this far, mark the bottom of it again, measuring all the way across. And I'm just going to do three here. Am, am I going too fast for anybody so far? Are you with me so far? You can tell us to slow down or to yeah. speed up or whatever. <laughs> Maybe not speed up. Okay. Hanging in there. She's okay. hanging in there. Okay. Doing just fine. You're doing <laughs> okay. All You're right, good. So I put the bottom one approximately two inches. So I'm just going to mark along here. 
chalk doesn't show up too great on the it camera. It doesn't. Okay, I'll get closer up so they can see it. Well, maybe I can go this way. There it is. Along. Rhonda asked what kind of ribbon did she say earlier was best to use? Uh, polyester. Uh, you, you can buy silk ribbon, but it's extremely expensive. Uh, Chris bought some. And didn't he say it was $34, it, it is expensive. Yeah. 34 something for not a very, very big roll. Yeah. So this is polyester. You can find it at Walmart, um, Walmart, Hobby Joanne's. Lobby, Joann's. Um, it's actually 40% off right now at Joann's. It's 40% <laughs> off at Joann's and they sometimes have coupons that will allow you to get like 20% off even sale items. So these symbols, I will be ready. These symbols down here at the bottom tell you if what you can do with this um, ribbon. So it tells you the washer symbols, the ironing symbols, um, those kind of things. But if it says acetate, it's that floral ribbon that is not good. So the acetate, but the you could even get satin yes. instead of satin. instead of silk. But silk, polyester yes. or satin mm -hmm. ribbon. Satin, satin, satin is gonna be um, more sensitive to marks with uh, Pens and stuff like that. Water, uh, but there is washable satin. Uh, satin is harder to find. Satin is more expensive. So I would not get it until you feel comfortable sewing mm -hmm. uh, ribbon. I would go with the polyester. I don't know what your name is, F66, <laughs> but um, asked a question that it looks like seven eighths of an inch. Is that the easier and easier size to sew? Uh, for ribbon? Mm, yes. Uh, it is. I, I oh, would like to use. Sure. Okay. Sorry. Marcia. I will even use um, an inch or on uh, some of them two inches. It right. just, part of it depends on what I find on sale for 99 cents that mm -hmm. speaks to me and my wallet. I, I'm going to say. <laughs> Seven eighth inch is the easiest. Um, what I, this is? Um, oops. Yeah. This is half inch. This is the blue is seven eighth inch on my skirt. Um, yeah, I did. The smaller stuff here is going to be the quarter inch to sew. Yeah, the yeah. quarter inch uh, is extremely hard to sew. Um, it's hard to uh, glue down because you don't have much space. I've done it. Um, if if you guys saw the red ribbon shirt in the artisan showcase, that was my skirt, and I did use um, it was either quarter inch or three eighth inch, and it was kind of it was difficult to sew. So uh, I wouldn't use it until you're more expensive. Uh, experience. Yes. <laughs> the, the zig the zigzag helps cover like you can use the zigzag to do mm -hmm. both sides and the thinner the ribbon the more precise your seams have to be the bigger the ribbon so like my two inch wide ribbon I have a lot of room to right. not stay in the lines <laughs> it's a uh, you know like driving on a big huge highway you don't have to stay right. in your lane quite so much right right so, um, you know, just, I, I would suggest the smallest ribbon to start with is seven eighths. Um, inch and a quarter to two inches would be the best. And maybe only do three ribbons on your first skirt, uh, just to make it a little bit easier. And Marsha asked if you use the same sizes on your granddaughter's skirts, were they seven eighths of an inch, the ribbon? Um, this is the exact same ribbon. Exact same ribbon. Um, on their skirt. I just had okay. it left over. Um, okay. One thing else I, you haven't at, touched on yet, um, they have these same ribbons. You have to be careful that it's not the wired ribbon. Oh, yes, you can use wired ribbon. Miss Amanda yeah. has used it. And what you do is, um, I didn't bring any wool. Do you have any wool? I don't have any wool. But at, um, at the raw edge of the ribbon, 
if you take on the edge of the wire and kind of pull down, that wire will kind of pull up. So kind of like you're drawing elastic through, hold on to that wire and just keep kind of pushing and you can pull that wire out. Mm -hmm. And so you can use wire ribbon. You just want to take that you wire. Take the one. Otherwise you have a hook skirt. Yeah, you have a hook skirt. Didn't you say somebody? I actually that? have a ribbon skirt that I used. It was the, the way the wire was put in was different and it was melted into the ribbon. So you put, so you put it. And so I went ahead and used it anyway because I was still learning and practicing. And it is just more of a hoop whenever I want. It's not crazy hoop, you need to but it walking. is. You should have got that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, would she do it the same way now? No. But these are things we learn as we go along, and it's just fine. Yeah. Uh, she may have to, you know, bend it out mm -hmm. after she washes it, but knowing Amanda, she does it fine. One thing um, I'll add to that, I did buy, because I wanted some pink ribbon to do, work on a skirt I'm working on right now, and they didn't have any that wasn't wire. So I bought the wire and I took it out. But if you, whenever you're doing that, you need to realize that for the, it's the same price as the other thing, but it is only, I think only like seven feet or nine feet as opposed to 21 feet on the other spool. So you get more bang for your buck if it's not the wired, but if that's the only option, then that might may be what you have to do. Yeah. Or you might find a real cute print and it only comes the wire yeah. so yeah just note that it's going to be less uh so you might have to buy two rolls of it where um the non-wire you know like these uh this comes in 18 feet uh which is equal to five yards you on just a normal skirt you should be able to get two rows of out of this ribbon on the average um this actually came from Walmart and it has 25 yards. Um, it's 25 on, yards? Yeah. On, yeah. yeah. On Amazon, I've been finding a lot that are 25 yards and they're a lot cheaper than yeah. Joanne's, the Ofre ribbon, but it's, you have to wait several days and you're not able to see what you're purchasing at the time. So, I mean, you, there's pros and cons. I like to, touch and feel and see and I want to make sure it matches exactly to my fabric that I bought so there's pros and cons I have ribbon from everywhere now yeah, so I'm getting yeah. That way. and it's the same way with buying elastic I mean if you know you're going to make several skirts go on Amazon and you can find elastic a lot cheaper on Amazon than what you can go on to Joanne's if you're going to buy make one two skirts go to Joanne's Hobby Lobby, Walmart, and buy your elastic there. Um, this is some elastic that I bought off of Amazon that if you're going to make skirts for kids or somebody that's losing weight or maybe somebody wants a ribbon skirt but they are in the early stage of a pregnancy and they want to be able to still wear their skirt in three months, this elastic has, I don't know if you can see it, it has actually little holes in it. And so what you can do is you can run it through, um, make it bigger, but then at the end, on the other one end, put a button and then you run it through and then you can put, instead of uh, sewing it together, you tack down one edge and leave the other one and do the button so you can make it. With you. Yes, it either, uh, you know, as you get skinnier, you, know, you can tighten it down. up, or if you go the other way, which all of us, you know, don't want to go, except if we're pregnant, then of course you want to get the, it, it's great. And so I use this in my granddaughters because um, it's long enough that I think they can still wear the ribbons. Next year, I'll just have to, just have to feel it out. 
um, just kind of, um, I don't think they still have it, but they, for a while, in a little kid's camps, yeah. they put this on the mm -hmm. side. And I found this um, actually for a different project for my daughter-in-law. And so we were using that. So I thought, okay. So any other questions yet? We'll go on to doing the ribbon. Okay, I'm gonna mark this one more. Mark two here. This is another thing that's great. If this process, you get talking, and you can go back and remark it, and it's it's not bad. And just like um, there's more than one way to make this skirt, there's more than one way to do this. You can certainly mark uh, with the chalk, you can mark with the pencils, you can uh, make little, you know, lay your ribbon out and pin it. Uh, you can use, um, where else was I going with this? I'm not sure. <laughs> Not yeah. everything is exactly, you, there are the variations. Five, yeah, the 501 spray, there's also some, yeah. the 505 spray. You can also get the ribbon um, adhesive, heat and bond. Heat heat and bond. bond. Um, the things that I will say, heat and bond, uh, you want to make sure your iron's really hot and really press a lot to get all that gooey out. The same way with the 505, uh, any glue, when you glue it down, walk away for a while. Let it uh, totally dry. It will be less evasive on your machine because if you sew right away, you may go to sew something else and you'll just kind of notice that your machine is dragging or the, the fabric's bunching up is because your needle has gotten gooey. Um, so if that happens, just get some uh, alcohol and a cotton swab and go up and down on your needle and it will remove that. Um, so we have marked uh, where the placement of the ribbon is going to be. I have already marked, uh, turned up the hem and the casing on this um, just for reference. And that's the reason I like to do it, but you don't have to do it. Um, now at this point, um, of course this one's not very, this one's not very bright, all right? But if you were making this for an adult, you're going to have quite a large piece of material. This is roughly what the width of. So at this point, you need to decide do I want to sew ribbon on this long piece of material, or would I rather sew on a smaller? Um, I personally am fine because I have my mark, but I know for uh, Kim. She prefers smaller, and you do too, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what you would do at this point, after you've marked it, you would fold your material in half again with your waist at the top and your hem at the bottom. Put it in half. I would then take it to the ironing board and press this fold here. Then you're going to come back 
lay your material out and cut along that line and cut two pieces of material. So you're then going to be working with two pieces of material. Because you've marked it, when you join the pieces of material, it should match again uh, because you waited to cut afterwards. Um, also, at this time, you can keep that your skirt is just going to be up and down, up and down, which is what my skirt is, or you may want it a little bit tighter up here. Some people don't want that much gathering. So you can then decide that you are going to make this hold this side for more of an A, which you're then, it, it, it's going to be shaped more like this on the side. Um, let me go down. So the way you do this, oh, we're way off. Yeah, we're way off. No, wait, it's me. Okay. So let's pretend like this is two pieces. And this is your waist at the top. You're going to fold it in half again and make sure that your edges are together. We're going to pretend like this. Okay. This, piece, this part is not in the constructions we are writing. Amanda works great at making some other instructions that are a little less technical. And uh, we can get those out to, to everybody. So we're going to pretend like this is the waist. This is the hem. We've got it folded in half. Amanda then takes and measures her waist. I'm going to do this roughly. This is the way I do everything. Yeah, <laughs> she does. She does. She's not. I've got to measure. If you if you quilt, you'll understand why I'm like down to the eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch difference on the quilt over as you spread right. out, make it bigger. It can then be two inches off at the end. So she takes her elastic and she folds it in half. Then she folds it again. So this is one fourth of your waist. She then comes to the material and she puts one edge of it, of the elastic on the fold and she moves towards the raw end and she then takes and about one to two inches to the outside, she makes a mark. She doesn't measure, she eyeballs it and she makes a measure. So we're gonna make this measure here. She then eyeballs, <laughs> very good. And she draws a diagonal from here to the corner here. What you can do if you want to eyeball it, you're perfectly welcome to. Or again, you can take the ruler and kind of eyeball it and make your mark. Make your mark. And again, doesn't have to be just perfectly diagonal, but then you could take your rotary cutter and, and cut along there. And what that does is it slims the waist a little bit. So because I already have plenty in this area, I do not need any complementary baggage in that area. <laughs> so it slims down how much I have right here on going on in this area, the bulk of the material. And so, but it still has to, you have to make that diagonal and you want it to be the full width of your, of your material because so you could take a step. Otherwise, you know, you're taking a little tiny step. So, um, 
that is also by cutting it into two pieces, that is where you add pockets if you want a pocket. Mm -hmm. So pockets, or it's if you want to do this style of ribbon, it's it's a lot easier to have it in the two pieces. This is the two pieces. This is has the front and back. The theme. If you're just doing one theme, the theme goes down the back. So that's how you make it more slimming. Or if you want to um, have pockets or do this, you want to definitely cut it into two pieces. So any questions on that at the moment? Denise likes the slimming tip. The slimming tip. I think they're ready to keep going. All right. All right. So, uh, All right. So now we've got this mark, and now we're going to sew on the ribbon. Um, Again, you can take the ribbon and take take pin. Always kind of come off a little bit because it is just you want to burn it at the end. Um, you can shift just different things. At this point, you can glue it. What she's talking about with the burning is uh, you can take a lighter or a candle and just singe the end of the of the ribbon, ribbon so that it does not break yeah. because the ribbon will break. You can also use a commercial uh, product like spray check or something along those lines, uh, but you have to do something otherwise it breaks and it looks icky. Right, but a lighter is very expensive. You can get them for 49 cents, 99 cents. <laughs> so and I think it works better than the fray check. Yeah. Think so. Yeah. So, yeah. so to glue it, if you have don't have double-sided ribbon um, on the dull side, just run a little bit of glue down the middle. Line it up on your line and just press it down, smooth it out, and go all the way to the end and come off the other end and cut. All right. Ooh, she's eyeballing something. Yeah, I do. I do. Just not as much as you buy. <laughs> so, um, you're going to come and you're going to glue it all down. I would go ahead and try to cut the finish that. One moment, and you can think about how easy that is. Do. Denise asked a question about the elastic. Do you stretch the elastic to measure your waist? You stretch it a little bit, a little bit. You can either stretch it a little bit or bring it and match it. And then when you sew it in, you're gonna overlap the elastic at the ends. So you might, you know, say, cut the elastic, uh, the size, but then know you want to overlap it like an inch, inch and a half, and then that kind of, but the one thing you do is once you put it inserted in, you're gonna pin it, try it on, and then pick it up if you need to before you sew it. Yeah. For the, um, measuring for Amanda's how she does the waist, you wouldn't stretch it at all. That is just kind of used as a measuring tool, right? Mm -hmm. You you stretch it to however well 
you add just a little bit so that you can overlap it. But you, I mean, for where you cut the thing, yes. it, it, you're just using it for that is the elastic, the elastic or the fabric. Um, it's the elastic you would use, but you're doing it at that point just to measure your waist, right? I mean, you wouldn't do it tight. No, I wouldn't do it tight, but that would be the elastic. Oh, okay. cut it and use it in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did we explain that or did I mess that up? Sorry. <laughs> um, I covered it up. Got it. Thanks. Okay. All right. So, how simple it is. Actually, I'm going to use the other one. If you just stay there. Stay right here? Yep. Okay. So, you just take the end. Do this thing and you just come across it just a couple of times and when you go and rub your fingers across it you're going to feel just a little rib just a tiny tiny rib but it's not going to spray anymore where you know if you don't do it and after you've worked the skirt you'll see all this it's starting to fray just in that much handling of it all right, so at this point, after you glued on your ribbons, go take a break, go get something to drink, go feed the dog, take the dog for a walk, whatever, to let this dry. Now, another way, as I said, you can take the pins and go along. Tiny, tiny pins. And stick them on there. I would pin them and just pin along. Now, if you're not gluing and you're pinning, you can then just start sewing. Um, again, the 505, if you use 505 spray or any kind of glue spray, I suggest putting newspaper down and then spraying it away from your project. I, but on the video, they're right over. But I would suggest putting that down and then spraying the back of your ribbon and then coming over, laying it along the line, just like you did here, pressing it down with your finger. Uh, for the heat and bond, heat and bond has uh, paper on one side uh, and it's kind of sticky on the other side. Uh, cut, cut it a little bit less than your ribbon, maybe about um, three fourths of the width of your ribbon. Um, they also it have it on rolls. Heat and bond also comes mm -hmm. in rolls. Oh, that's true. I try to open it. It's, so. it's very te it's too tedious for it's me. Too te it's very, the, very tedious. And, and, and the, the, the 505 is too expensive for my blood. So I have had really good success just using the glue stick. The glue stick. And, and it's super cheap. So. And this is just the regular. Now you can buy regular fabric glue that looks like this too. Mm -hmm. It's not very expensive. No, it's not. But this one is cheaper. It's fine. But again, um, do this if you're using pins when you're sewing along go slow when you get to a pin stop take the pin out and keep going because you never want to sew over pins because if your needle hits that pin it's either going to break the needle it's going to bend the pin and then it's hard to get it out and you may end up uh ripping your ribbon or ripping your fabric so, or, or worse getting the pin folded down into your machine as well as the needle mm -hmm. down in the machine and then you have to do surgery on your machine uh -oh. you don't want to do that <laughs> on that so we're at that stage I think this is um, been long enough that we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you how I sew uh, the ribbons on. Um, yeah, that's what you're talking about. She said she's done that as well. 
Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah. it's not I'm thinking of my trusty open toe foot. Oh, uh, yeah, I showed you about practicing with the women. Okay, we are switching cameras. Yeah, it's over. Sorry, I'm going to go all the way around and then I just stood up and did it. I should have brought this back. My sewing room is like a uh, airport <laughs> and the planes are coming in because I don't do well in dark. So, yeah, we're. And then you get a new machine and you haven't used your other machine in a while and you forget how to use it. I'm trying to figure out how to do this camera. You think you got it? Then you need to switch it. Maybe, what if you come in? What if we move the no, I'm good. You're down. Okay. So I like to use a little bit longer um, stitch length. So I am going to uh, set my stitch. Let me get a little, a little bit more of the machine. I am going to set my stitch length <laughs> to three and a half. That's right. Um, every machine has a different stitch length, but normally 2.2 to 2.5 is a normal stitch. So, and a five is the longest. So I kind of go in between there. So a 3.5. As if you look on my tip sheet, I kind of show you how to uh, place the presser foot against the uh, ribbon. Uh, I'm going to start on the right side of the ribbon. Which it looks like the left side, but that's just because the camera. Oh, because, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the wrong way. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to take my needle and move it to the far right. As far as it will go. And then I'm going to bring it I down. <laughs> <laughs> we are not camera people. People. Uh, I think that would be probably as close as we get. But I'm going to bring the needle down and I'm eyeballing it to make sure that it, if you look at the side of, of the ribbon, <laughs> you can see a little edge. I want to go just to the inside of that edge. And so I eyeball it. It looks right to me. And then I also have a, an adjustment on my machine to low or medium. I like to start out slow at the beginning so I know that it's right where, and this might be a good thing for you guys when you're just starting. I take a couple of stitches a little bit too slow. And then I back stitch to lock the threads in. And then I move forward again and check to make sure it's where I want it to go. And it is. Oh my God. 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 Oh my just go along the edge and just kind of go slow, what feels comfortable to you. And in time, you'll be able to go really, really fast. And just go along like that. And that's for a straight stitch. So you get to the end, back stitch, and we're done. Okay, now I'm going to do a zigzag on the other side. The other thing I kind of do is I kind of come in and like stretch, kind of stretch. I 
Okay, so on the other side, for the zigzag, it's pretty good. I We've been trying to do this in the kingdom. They have a mirror and mm -hmm. shoot up to the mirror oh, and not lay it. I'm not really Okay, so I'm going to step on the scene on a zigzag. And I want it. I usually set, set it like on a one for the stitch length. And for the width, I'm going to come down to about two and a half. This is for just practice. Just practice till you get the width and the length that you want. Just for practice, we have a little more. All right. And, um, what's the thing that changed here? What? I don't know, I just realized something like that. I can make my new machine go to the left or the right. Um, you may mm -hmm. have to turn your, your uh, material around uh, to do the right. It has to be on the right side of it. Depends on how your machine is set up. I haven't used this machine now. We're about to. All right. I have. And this starts on along the edge. See, and yep, I got it right where I want. And just keep going along. And I'm using a small stitch like what we saw on that dog skull. And you want to back stitches at the end, and that's going to back stitch in the middle of the top. So, I don't know if you can see the smaller this bag. I think it's hardly golden. Oh, it was a, yeah, probably so. Now, if you wanted to join these together, you would sew one side and then you would take your other ribbon, lay it side by side, make your zigzag a little bit wider, and then just you would actually use the center of it as the focal point down the center, and then it's going to catch each side. And I did my last that I that you did. So yeah. the two I, I do have, together. yeah, and I have an example I believe in the picture. So just along there. So once you get your ribbons on, now the magic of everything go together. So I have another picture. Oh, thank you. So I've sewn all the ribbons together. Um, I put them the ombre style. I still have my hem in here. I've got it uh, pinned. I'm going to take the pins out on the end. And uh, you know, have music on or I like audio books. So just okay, that's another good thing oh, because a lot of plug. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Maybe a little shameless plug. We're doing an audio book or a book club in November. We're doing Brady the Sweetgrass. Yeah. If anybody wants to join that, we'd love to have you. Mm -hmm. You may not want to watch, you know, a movie that you haven't saw before. Or you know your favorite TV show that you know you're waiting to see what happens because there was a cliffhanger at the end because then you might not come back um, might get off you might not get all the same ribbons on the no, front you right the back front to back oh. hmm. so you, what you want to do is you first want to match your ribbons 
And you just put your seams together. This one's just going to have the one seam. So, and kind of hold it together and just fold it back to see, does that match? Oh, look. look. Okay, I've got that one. It's up here. Go to the other end. Does it match? Okay. And then pin it. Because I don't have a big pin. So I'll just show you. And that's one reason why um, stacking the ribbons might be a better thing than doing a space in between them because right. you're, not, easier. you're not going to have a lot of variation. But if you mark, if you mark, and you don't cut your fabric, thank you, then it should, it should match pretty well. She says that, but I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Are you watching TV again? Um, no, because I'm in my dining room. I get to okay. unfold in the book, I guess. And and so at the ribbon part, I would mark, I would pin in like that at, mm -hmm. at the ribbon. All right. Then come down at your hem or your casing. It really doesn't matter which which end you start at and match the ends together. And um, depends on how comfortable what you are. Do you want to pin? Do you not want to pin? Mom has got to go. So uh, we are recording this, so I can email you the link if you want to watch the rest of it. And Rhonda, have a good day. Bye, Rhonda. Bye. Thank you. So you're just going to pin down, down, you come down to the other end. <laughs> this chair is short. Well, probably not about the chair at home. Always use a, a kind of a comfortable chair at home. Uh, make sure your machine is at a good comfortable height. Uh, not too not too low, not too high. Um, trying to make your conditions as as um, comfortable as not chaotic. Um, so that you can kind of be in a happy zone. And if you don't get these edges right, you know, just even, 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 not really that. The importance is here and All right. So here you can kind of look and check how close did I come to matching up? Either it's by your lines or if you've already pressed by pressing and they make your match up. And then typically, like I said, a typical seam in uh, sewing is a five eighths inch seam. I suggest using a half inch seam to a uh, three fourths inch seam. It's whatever you. Uh, prefer. Um, I would use a longer, a little bit longer uh, stitch length until you're more comfortable with the machine because it's easier to rip out if you need to. Um, on the um, presser foot, with the needle going down in the middle to the right, is a quarter of an inch. So if you move the needle all the way to the left, sorry, use the wrong. If you move it all the way to the left, you're going to have a half inch seam. You can put the presser foot right at the edge 
have a material and you're going to have a half ounce thing. And you're just going to sew down. Make sure your pins are uh, far enough to the left that you do not run over them. You know, we have quite a spring team. Don't worry about it. Nobody's going to be second in it. Just go at your whatever comfortable to you and stick that up. And I didn't that. But you should. But I should have. If I this is this is part of being a quilter in quilting. You don't backstitch at the beginning of the mm -hmm. scene. <laughs> so I've gotten into this bad habit of not doing that. But as long as you are actually going to go over the seam yeah. in another fashion, you'll be fine. Just when you uh, do the case. Right. So we'll see. Did I get this matched? This will be the time I didn't come on display. And yes, I've gotten. Okay, that is so they, they've matched. Now you want to press the seam. You can either press the seam open and just go, or if you want to overlock the machine. Um, you can take and do a zigzag within the, the seam. Uh, your machine may have an overcast bit. You may want to do that. This step, though, is important even me as someone who doesn't do all of the technical sewing. If you have a cotton that is going to fray, you have to go back over that, or over time as you wash it, the seam will come close. The, the it will fray closer and closer to the seam, and then eventually that seam won't hold anymore. So you do have to lock that in so that it doesn't fray. Mm -hmm. So, or if you happen to have a pair of pinking shoes, nope. most people don't have pairs. I actually have my husband. So you could also use uh, pinking shoes, which um, makes it like. Uh, that will just keep it from spraying. Uh, so if they are uh, sewn together because uh, you've done an overlock, you just want to press the seam to one side. Um, what I like to do is know which way I'm going to insert my elastic, which I have a tendency to go just away from the seam. So I'm going to press my seam. This way. If I have two seams, one's going to be this way, and then when I get to the other side, it's going to be from the other way. Because then you don't come up that you uh, get to that seam and your needle or your safety pin won't go through because you're going underneath um, the flap. So we've done that. We don't have an iron here. So at this point, you're then going to come back in and you can either just do your pin or you can do your painting. But if you've already got it pinned down or pressed down, you just take it and fold it. Fold it again. Pin it. And you're going to sew right along the edge, leaving a big enough hole that you can insert your elastic. Does anyone want to see that totally done? Or has anybody seen that before? The elastic or elastic. sewing? Oh. And sewing it like along the edge. Let's go ahead. It will take just a little bit, but we'll get it. So what she's doing right now is going to go ahead and sew the casing, the top part where the elastic's going to go. Yes. If you have any questions while I'm 
on doing this, uh, feel free to ask him, um, him or uh, Amanda, because that would be the answer. Where the ribbon is, we want to put a glass of ribbon. Um, this is actually the him, what she's doing right now. So, so the ribbon is down here at the bottom? Yeah. She's okay. doing the bottom. I did. I did. Here it is. Oh, oh, I was like, turn it, it around. Did it get <laughs> she was worried for a minute. Thanks. Well, it could have worked. It would have worked either way. Either way. I'm setting lower and I don't have as much light as I normally do. And for this group, I like for my granddaughters to have that little, uh, little bit more of the uh, paper bag. Paper bag. Paper bag. Yeah. Just to figure out the machine again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's why I want to want to do it. Oh, it's not over to the right. Okay, it'll work. Okay. And so along the edge of the inside of the casing. And since she has already ironed, it, she doesn't have to worry about her measurement because it's already laying flat for her at the right spot. So, and the reason I'm holding it at both ends is uh, this table is kind of bouncing up and down, so it needs to kind of help. Uh, so I'm not really pulling it through, I'm just guiding it. Marion asks if the paperback waist is required for the traditional wind up, and absolutely not. It's just kind of a new style a for new style that people like, um, especially like for me, I might not want my belly to be showing that much, so and I might wear a shirt over it. So I would need the paperback waist, and if um, you don't like that, then if you're going to wear a t-shirt over it, you're not even going to see it. So that's just extra material that in bulk that you don't need so no you don't have to have it a lot of um, styles a different style uh, to wear a big belt with it and um, that is really pretty flattering and if you i mean i have seen some that the belt that the paperback waist goes above you know oh, the belt. And, but the belt is there but then you could also do it with without so so if you're going to do the paper bag waist, then you do not make that uh, tapered part uh, to the waist. You just leave it more of a straight square. All right. And we can uh, put examples of that in the um, additional instructions that will be coming. We're trying to talk Chris into teaching a belt class, how to make a white, one of those white belts. Now, when you come back to the other edge, you're going to leave leave at least a two inch opening, leave double what your elastic was. Is. I'm not going to back. I'm not going to back stitch, but you should back stitch. <laughs> I'm not going to back stitch right now. All right, so then. You've got everything closed up, and you're going to take your elastic. Thank you. Um, and I get going, and I forget about the other edge, and sometimes it'll come through. So I put a pin at one end, but I also put a pin at the other end. 
because that will help keep keep it from pulling all the way through when I keep seeing Mary Ann's face of thin dripping at me. <laughs> and it's not moving. It's cute. I know it's cute, mm -hmm. but it makes me smile. Mm -hmm. It makes me smile. Thank you, Mary Ann. <laughs> uh, so, oh, this is not right because I didn't do the big bag away. Uh, this right now is going to be fairly big. Uh, it's not going to quite look right. Uh, oh, I guess I should go ahead and do it. the top. Yeah. yeah, let me go ahead and go around again. So with a paper bag, you have to like do another seam around on the top part so that you're creating that casing. So it'd be fairly tight for the elastic. Right. So that leaves the little, however big you want the paper bag part to come up, usually about an inch or so. Mm -hmm. Which is what she has on here on her. I always, okay, there's a difference between having a paper bag and having just a little bit uh, at the top. It was a way I was taught uh -huh. in school that when you do an elastic uh, weight that you do so a little bit into the inside at the very, very top. Um, oh. That's just something, so it's a habit. So I will always go about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I feel like it's um, almost like the same principle of understitching so that mm -hmm. it's like to keep it from moving around. Like yeah. It kind of keeps it in place. Yeah. Marta, did you take sewing in on this one? If she's listening. Mm -hmm. but maybe that was just something that that teacher taught all the time. I think I think she did, but I can't remember. She took it at old mission. Huh? At old mission. She did take it at old mission. Yes. Okay. We might have even been in the same class. I don't know, but I think that's where I learned how to do that in the um, Do you remember that, Marsha? Doing the top the, part of the skirt. Uh huh. Always cut. Oh, going like a quarter of an inch from the edge. I feel like it gives it just kind of a finished look to it. Where do you see the, the pockets? It pops up. I, ah! thought, I thought she was a terrible teacher. She didn't think I would ever learn to sew. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember her name. I remember what she looked like. <laughs> and pray do not. Me either. She doesn't remember her name. Yeah. Do not. Uh, um, Get your nap correct. You will you will get a bad break from that. Tell me that you're still I feel like you're traumatized from it. <laughs> I am, I was. <laughs> I got a D on that project. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? Um I'm just gonna have to eyeball it because my machine is not going on as well. Yeah, we're just kind of showing how to do it. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do an extremely long. I don't know why this machine's not doing what I want. So. Okay. I've got to go along here. This is where you, again, be comfortable and, and knowing that you can make a mistake, you can go back and rip it out uh, if you decide to do something different because that's what I will do with this skirt um, on here, but just because of um, my machine's not doing exactly uh, where I want it to. So this is what it's going to look like on a paper bag weight. This is where you're going to insert the elastic. You have this at the top. Um, 
I would not go much more than an inch, inch and a half above here. You could make it wider. Um, I did that on my red skirt. I wish I hadn't. Oh, yeah. Well, I, it was, I think it was too, too much. Too much. Yeah. Too much. But it's still, it's very for me, for, for me, yeah. Uh, I think someone thinner would have left I won't make another one that Okay, so you take the elastic and you insert it in the hole. And you just start pushing the pin through and grab it and let it go. Push a little bit more, grab and pull. And kind of watch to make sure that the elastic is not turning. You have to pull it up over on the side. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe Amanda can. Amanda? No. It's respectful. All right. Can you still sign it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's tomorrow. <laughs> For my shirts, this part takes forever. Yeah, I apologize. Um, you got any questions? You got anything interesting going on in your life you'd like to uh, let us know about? Any suggestions for future classes? Anything while we're doing, waiting for this elastic to go round and round? Um, I should have had one done. It's okay. You're, this is, that's way smaller than my skirts are, so my skirts take a long time to go all the way around. I should have done it on that. One of the girls' skirts. Mm -hmm. and not yeah, feel free to take off the mic and actually talk mm -hmm. and not just at this point. Pat away. So he's the father of Kirsten, aren't he? Marshall's the one to talk here. He's up in the third. What jury is that? Um, she's in Diamond. Are you oh, in okay. Diamond jury? Or Green Bay, something. It's yeah. fairly close. Uh -huh. Your aunt's on Cuyahoga Road, so she's not very far. <laughs> Just six miles away. Just six miles away. My big, you might be the first, yeah. yeah. Where's Denise? Denise, where are you from? Uh, the Kansas City area. Where'd you say? Kansas City. Oh, Kansas oh, City. Oh, Kansas City. Okay. Your neighbors in Maryland. Yeah. Do you live on the Missouri side or the Kansas side? Kansas. Yeah. Really? Why not county? No, Johnson County. Johnson County. Okay. And Christina? I'm from the Cincinnati, Ohio area. Oh, okay. So you're the farthest. Yeah. Now here's F6. That's Marshall. Yeah. Okay. That's Marshall too? Yeah. Okay. So I'm watching, I'm listening with my phone, but I'm watching on the computer as well. So that's why I show up twice. That's oh, that's yeah, I like it. That's fine. Hey, I've done that before. All right. <laughs> it's good. Thank you guys for spending the afternoon with us. We appreciate your patience and your indulgence of time. But she's okay, all the way so around. I've got to the end. And one drawback of this particular type of elastic. If you put if you put it in, it can stamp the end. So what you're going to do at this point? 
you're going to take and make sure again that it's not turned. Kind of hold the, the elastic together and just kind of pull and kind of stretch it out a little bit. If, if, you, if you make your casing too wide, then the elastic will turn and turn inside there. And it's very frustrating. So you want to then just pin your elastic together. I always kind of pin perpendicular just so that it kind of helps keep it, turn your skirt inside out. You're gonna try it on. And then if it needs to be tightened, just pull your elastic up to where it fits like you want it, okay? Don't worry about if the gathers are totally even or anything. Um, mark it, pin it to where, where it's tight, where it's the tightness that you want. And then take it off, turn it again and put together and then I sew across the elastic at one end and again at the other end of where they join so that it still lets it stretch, except in those places. And I, I sew back and forth several times. Um, and then once you've got it sewn, together, then take and stretch it out this way, take and stretch it out the other way, play with your, your gathers till you've got it the way you want. Um, then come back and uh, sew across that opening of where you put the last again across here. Then the next, you're going to want to sew your hem. Again, just go to the inside. You could uh, sew that and then on the outside, put a decorative stitch along the bottom. Uh, you could actually take another ribbon and put it at the very bottom, maybe a smaller ribbon. What I did is I took and sewed the ribbon on and then turned it under uh, on the bottom uh, to do something decorative to the bottom. What? Ribbon your toes in there. Oh! <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a joke about my toes right now. Um, my husband and I went and had uh, pedicure yesterday, and I chose a um, polish that was a lot more sparkly than I thought. It was. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> and it's very cute. So, yeah, at that point, better. you have your ribbon skirt. Mm -hmm. And I might need to. Uh, you can even do decorative stitches to mm -hmm. stitch these on. Right. Um, and you can use contrasting uh, rib, uh, red, like this is contrasting for these colors, but it matches more of these colors. So you could do contrasting or matching, like on this one, she did matching like on everyone. And so it's just all about what you want. Now, at this point, you can put on the appliques with material appliques, with the vinyl appliques, with um, um, embroidery, what, whatever, whatever you think that you know, you're inspired to do, to do. These I made a little bit shorter. Um, just um, much easier than I thought. Of course I say that, and the actual doing it at first will probably I mean, oh, Marianne, you will do fine. Yeah, it's, it was much easier. I mean, I literally, before I did this, I had only sewn one bag. So, um, it, and now I've made four skirts, I think. Uh -huh. um, you know, and uh, 
you know, Kim, uh, I, I know she could help. I'm on Facebook. Um, Amanda's on Facebook. Find us, messenger, message us. Um, we may not get back to you during the day. Oh, I need to accept that. Um, you may not. No, oh, we're still over here. I know it's so wide out there. Can we yeah. move it over here? Okay. Actually, I think, let me switch. The cameras. Um, we all will stay in days. Kim would probably answer you during the day. Kim will answer you during the day. Yeah. Um, Amanda and I um, work outside, and so uh, we would probably answer you in the evening. I'm willing to set up uh, doing something on um, a messenger where you can video. I have dual on my phone, and if you have it, I'd be happy to to do that and, <laughs> and go over things with you if you have any questions, if you want me to look at it somewhere. Um, you know, how do I do this on my machine or whatever uh, video uh, call? We can figure it out. We can figure it out. Um, Karen asked if this is going to be available on Facebook. Um, I don't think so. I did record it and I will email it to you. And there were a couple of people that weren't able to make it today. I will email it to them, but it will be for a limited time, um, maybe only a couple of weeks because um, we're like limited on space on how much we can record. So it, I will email you the link after today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, the Facebook groups, there are several of those. There's just hundreds and hundreds of things on Facebook, probably on here, uh, where you could go and just gain uh, inspiration and, and just see all of the other things that are kind of very popular right now. Um, and um, you're welcome to look at my pin right now. Of ribbon skirts? Yes. So yeah. beautiful and, and just so so much creativity. I'm just in awe at so many people's um, creativity and artistry and just their uh, craftsmanship. And so uh, lots and lots of ideas there, and just let those creative juices flow. <laughs> so we've seen ones where uh, they have horses on. All right, Karen. Um, but Karen's leaving. She's okay. got to go. Bye. Um, so you can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, Marsha asks about how did you sew those ribbons on the side of your skirt? How did I sew? Oh, okay. So um, as I said, this was two pieces and I, I marked it all the way across and then I cut it in half. And so I had the two pieces. I decided I was going to do, I think, a three-quarter inch seam. I can't remember what I did. And I went ahead and at the edge, each edge, I marked inside. And then when I sewed the ribbons on, I sewed from those marks, a little bit inside those marks, uh, so that the ribbon wasn't sewn all the way to the edge. Uh, then I, when I went to sew the side, I just took the ribbon and tied it, you know, kind of did a loose knot and then pinned it to the inside. I don't know whether you can see this, Martha. And so that it wouldn't get caught in the seam. And then I just sewed the seam. And then that way, uh, once I sewed the seam, I undid pinned them, undid the knot, and I don't know. Well, I and I. How did you do it on yours? Mine is actually different. Okay. Right. See, everybody has a different idea on how, um, how they did it. The insides, like I didn't leave the, I didn't do extra long ribbons on the sides. What I did, I did it like normal, just like this is done normally. Where did you say? <laughs> I know. There she does such an awesome job. So I did it like this, but before I sewed it, I actually did like a fake ribbon on the side, fake thing that I um, oh, 
oh. did like this, and then like however when I, however long I wanted it, I did them um, nine inches each one. So I actually did it 18 inches, folded it in half like that, cut it, and I pinned it in between here, and then sewed it up the, uh, on the side. That so that way you don't have all that extra ribbon while you're working and you don't have to worry about the seams and different things like that. So it's kind of a, kind of a cheater thing to it, but it, um, I saw that as a tip on that Facebook group. Ribbon, ribbon skirts every day is the Oh, that's, that's <laughs> Yeah. yeah. They don't call those cheats anymore. They call them hacks. Oh, hacks. Right. Hacks. So, um, that's my hack for the side tabs is what they call, a lot of people call them. Okay. I didn't see that message and we won't see it. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it, it is a great website. It's got beautiful skirts on it. Um, so, but that does make sense to do it that way. Um, go back a little bit. Back a little bit. Back a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm not really looking at myself on the screen. <laughs> so, that I think that's a great hat. So, all right. Any other things before anybody have any questions? We're all going to see ribbon skirts posted for the contest, or at least on the cultural page of I did this. Maybe so, not. <laughs> maybe. 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 <laughs> I know Marsha's making them for her granddaughters, and I'm sure one for herself. That might be a good mother daughter project. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, like I said, you're always able to contact us for um, help, or um, you can email me, post it on the cultural center page, message us there. We can find, if I can answer you, then we'll, we will get you in contact with Carolyn and Amanda to help you out. So, um, I think that's it. Are you guys good with and against? Thank right. you guys for coming. Thank you. It was good seeing you, Marilyn. Good seeing you. See you, May. Thank you. You're welcome, Chris. Bye, Marianne. Marsha and Marianne. And Bye. I think I got out. Oh, she's, I mean, just trying to wave. But. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later. It's good on you. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Bye.